Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Krista McNutt, and I'm going to be taking you through some of the resources, uh, some that you might know uh, that you've uh, created or explored before um, or not. I'd like to recognize, first of all, uh, the land that most of us are on today. Uh, this land is referred to as uh, Treaty 6, 7, and 8 and Homelands of Métis. Uh, this is the land that, uh, that I've grown up on for 15 years. Uh, prior to that, I grew up the previous 15 plus years in Nova Scotia. Uh, so I'd like to also recognize the uh, ancestral unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq, uh, which I hope to have the opportunity to take a break and visit again soon. Uh, speaking of breaks, I hope that each of you throughout these three days have an opportunity to go outside, uh, take a break, Feel your feet on the ground and appreciate the land that we live on uh, and that we that we appreciate the sun in the air from each day. Uh, so also hearkening back to uh, what what we saw in the keynote this morning with Dr. Stephen Brookfield, I'd like to share that I'm from blueberry fields. Uh, I'm from off leash dogs and a whole lot of ketchup on French fries. Uh, that's my favorite meal when I was a child. Uh, if you've worked with me in the past, you know that I'm uh, I'm all about open education. Uh, so certainly the keynote today really spoke to me and connected with me quite deeply. And you'll see some questions and things throughout the presentation today that reference the keynote this morning. I was I did have my slides on this morning looking through and th thinking about how I can make things the best they can be for you today. Uh, so to start us off, first of all, I'd like to bring your attention to this little guy. So the Teaching Institute's theme uh, this year is the chameleon. Uh, certainly that represents ch change and transition and adaptation. Uh, I've seen all of our instructors doing that through the past year and a half. Uh, it's been very inspiring for me. Uh, but let me introduce you to the armadillo gilded lizard. So this little guy is also called the Ouroboros cataphractus. Uh, Ouroboros cataphractus is found in western south coast of the, the western coast of South Africa. Uh, what makes this little guy unique is that to protect himself, he curls himself in a little ball. So you can see he's, he's biting his tail there to protect himself. Uh, that's his protective stance. The other thing that makes him really unique or, or them really unique is that they give birth to uh, live offspring. So most lizards lay eggs. These little, uh, little ones do not. So that's that's pretty inspiring to me. It's pretty interesting if you think about uh, reflection and if you think about the fact that we're quite often in defensive stance when we're doing things differently, we can be in that mode. Uh, this guy's turning himself into a circle, so he's becoming iterative. Uh, I discovered this little creature last week when I was participating in the Digital Ped Pedagogy Lab. Uh, this was hosted by the University of Colorado. Uh, in fact, one of the faculty members, Martha Burtis, who was part of this program, uh, talked about using uh, cataphractus, uh, using cataphract as a verb. <laughs> so uh, if you think about becoming defensive or becoming closed in or protective of your practice, uh, I know sometimes I feel the need to cataphract and kind of close up a little bit and think, I just need to get through this time. And if I think about this little guy, it makes me think about iterative evaluation. It makes me think of, uh, creating that circle and that cycle of feedback uh, that we heard from Dr. Stephen Pressfield this morning, uh, Brookfield, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to come back to Ouroboros cataphractus a little bit later. And uh, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is essentially uh, some of the resources that we have on our website. So I want to create a space for us to practice some reflection uh, while also learning about what we have available to you from CTL. So the first place that I would like you to look if you're looking for resources around uh, reflecting is uh, our Center for Teaching and Learning website, so ctl.ualberta.ca. And on that page, you'll see support for teaching right up here and reflection. And then the section I'm in right now is what to reflect on your teaching. So if I pop back over here, this is the actual page, the live page. Support for teaching, reflection, and what to reflect on your teaching. If I click here, one of the things I'm going to anchor on today in our session is course design. 
there are obviously uh, multiple sections here for us to look at, um, but I am going to anchor on course design just to make things simple for us. When you're looking through this website, uh, you might also uh, notice that there's links in the different sections. So when you're going through uh, course design as an example, I'll let my computer load a little bit. Uh, we've got three categories here that I think will be helpful for us in our, in our breakout room discussions today. So if we look at coherent design of instructions, there's some guiding questions to help you get started on thinking and reflecting about your course design. Uh, so those are some, some of the anchor points that I'll provide uh, for our breakout sessions when we go into them in a few minutes here. Um, because like I said, I wanted to create really a conversation space. This is your lunch hour. So I don't want to spend too much time lecturing too much at you. I want to give you a chance to chat with each other and reflect on what we experienced this morning. The next thing that I would like to bring your attention to on the CTL website is the course design rubric. So this is on the main page. And if I go to my second tab here, and or rather if I just go to our main Center for Teaching and Learning page, and scroll down, I'll find our course design rubric right here among our other resources. So this document is something I found really valuable for looking through. It's, it's a pretty standard rubric. And uh, so it helps you go through and look very basically incomplete, aligned, exemplary. Uh, and it's all categorized into sections. So we have section A around content presentation. That goes into learning outcomes, using e-class, support for learning. There's also section B around interaction. So that focuses on instructor contact with the student, as well as student to student contact. So it has both of those lenses there for you to uh, look through and, and self-reflect or have a peer reflect with you on. There's also section C, which is assessment. We will have a category for that as well in our breakout rooms. And accessibility. Uh, so there's some really key sections in this document for you uh, to, to have a good starting point to reflect on, depending on where you're coming at from reflecting on your teaching. And if you know where to start or if you're not quite sure where you want to start, this might be a good starting place for you to think about what you want to look at first or second or third. So the first breakout room that we're going to go into, uh, I have two questions that I'm looking at, at focusing on. And essentially what I'm looking to do is I have a, a shared uh, Google Slides document that I wanna share with you. And each breakout room, what I'd like to see is uh, for us to have conversations around these questions that are in here. So I'm gonna put the uh, link to this right in the chat for you. Uh, and it's really meant to just have you, give you a place to work in when we go into our breakout rooms. So the questions that I'm looking for us to explore. Uh, so why and how have you reflected on your teaching in the past? Uh, this is a conversation that we can just have among our, ourselves as instructors is, have I really done this before? Is it something that I've been successful at before or I felt successful at before? Uh, are there areas that I really want to focus on or not? And the question around what resonates with you to explore further. Uh, so with our wonderful keynote this morning, you may not actually need to look at anything, think of what resonates with you and what you want to explore. Uh, but if you're looking for somewhere to start, I would recommend uh, peeking at the CTL website. Uh, we'll put a link in the chat for you around the uh, section I had talked about earlier with course design. So this is the reflection section and course design. And what I'm looking at here primarily is these three sections. So coherent design of instruction, constructive assessment strategies, and meaningful learning resources and materials. Uh, so those questions, you'll see a little breakdown of each of those in the shared document. So design of instruction. I've got some questions that I pulled uh, from my inspiration from the keynote this morning, as well as some resources uh, that you could look at after the session uh, to consider further exploration of the design of your instruction. Uh, the same as assessment strategies and learning resources and materials. If there's anyone from this conversation that we just had that would like to share some of the uh, answers that they had to those questions or uh, an aha moment that you might have had in the conversation, I'd love to just open up the floor for that before we move on to any other sections of our session. <laughs> So 
sometimes that's the that's the way I find uh, it's most comfortable to frame it too, right? With those with those questions to lead you in and start exploring and discovering. Um, and I think you'll anyone who's looking to do a, a reflective journal uh, that web that web page that I shared where there's those three categories and just some guiding questions. Even that is a nice start with some reflective prompts to start with some questioning for yourself or some inquiry. So that could be a good place to start. Um, I just wanted to share from our group, you know, something that resonated with me is um, how difficult it can be to uh, do reflection, self-reflection when there are so many needs to attend to, right? Whether you're a new and emerging instructor and you're, you know, learning your craft and, um, you know, just getting through your courses, right? Teaching the materials, working with the technology. And, and one of um, the colleagues in our group is a American Sign Language instructor. And so they're also trying to, you know, use technology in a way with their students. And that has become difficult, right? To use a technology effectively. So I think we want to be reflective, but sometimes there are other challenges that persist um, in doing so. Absolutely. And that, that actually reminds me of, if we look at our reflection page on the CTL website, and we look at how to reflect on your teaching, that second, second box here, there's a, there's a diagram here. And I was actually, um, a little taken aback at first when I was introduced to this because I thought of reflection as I'm going to to have some inquiry questions and that that journaling side is my usual experience. And this approach actually asks us to first of all teach, think about whether we're going to reflect or not, um, and then the third stage is awareness. And what this guidance gives us is actually writing a story about what is, and then testing whether that's actually true or not. Uh, so finding the evidence. So I found that really interesting because it doesn't necessarily require that we know exactly what we want to evaluate yet. It's more just reflecting on what is, and maybe that's all we need to do at a certain point in our in a reflective process. That's such a that's such a good point. I, I love that you shared that, and I um. One thing that came up in my mind as you were talking about that too is, is really just the difference between effective and practical reflection and, and what we're actually reflecting on, right? So if we're in the middle of a pandemic and we're trying to, to teach and or trying to learn, whether we're the, the instructor or the student or both, um, maybe simply what we need to be doing is just taking a step back and reflecting on how we feel about the situation and why. And that might be what we need to get to the next stage of showing up and teaching, right? Um, so that's that's one thing that I've seen in some of the literature, is, and it's directly on our website as well, is, is reflecting effectively and then reflect, reflecting practically. Um, certainly, I can reflect on the beginning of this session. I was so full of nerves because I was so emotionally involved in the keynote <laughs> that I'm not calm coming in here. Uh, and so that's a chance for me to reflect on how how did I feel coming in, right? Maybe too excited. And I'll, I'll point out just as an anchor as well for after the session, uh, the three categories that we had looked at potentially focusing on with their discussion around reflection, um, some resources that are there. So uh, design of instruction. Um, when do I ask my, my students to perform as students? Do they, does this serve their learning well? Uh, this is a question I pulled straight from the keynote, of course, because I thought that was really a wonderful question. Um, so on the CTL site and in this link, we do have a learning outcomes guide. So this is all around uh, assessing your uh, your knowledge, skills and, and attributes and how those are integrated into what you're teaching and learning with your students and uh, the connection between the outcomes of their learning and the activities and the assessment. Uh, so it helps you go through that. And I think one section that's quite useful is on page 24, there's uh, a section directly about the KSAs and looking at the language that you use when you're writing a learning outcome. Uh, so if you do work with learning outcomes and are looking at the verbs and the language that you're using, that might be a good section to just jump straight into and use. Uh, and that on its own could be a reflective tool. 
Uh, also the course design rubric, I mentioned there's uh, sections in there. So if you're looking at the design of your instruction, uh, section A and B may be a good place to, to look and start with that. Uh, that could also be used as a form of evidence if you're going through that uh, cycle that we have on the website. Uh, when you get through your reflective process, eventually you're looking for evidence of what have I done? And uh, is it actually what I expected to achieve or not? And does it meet the expectations of what I'm hoping to achieve with my students? The second section here, we have assessment strategies. Uh, so how do I allow my students to demonstrate that they are learning? Uh, that could be a good journaling question to, to take away. And in the course design rubric, we have section C is all about assessment. Uh, we also have a really nice uh, clean and simple FAQ about assessment on the CTL website. Uh, and if you go to the assessment section on the website, my goodness, there's so much. It's probably one of the largest sections on our page. So uh, there's a lot there for you to look at, uh, to launch from for a consultation also. Um, and then the third section we, we could have looked at is uh, learning resources and materials. Uh, so my question around that is really who speaks about your class first? Is it your resources or is it you as an instructor? Um, I thought that was uh, a good question to ask in terms of what's the first interaction that the students have? Because quite often it is the textbook. And is it, the, is it setting the tone for your class that you want or not? And how could we potentially support uh, shifting that for you? Uh, there's some resources you may enjoy. Um, Linked here, Importance of Effective Design for Learning is a wonderful slideshow from, from Graham, uh, as well as Accessibility uh, Toolkit. So now that I've powered through that for you, uh, the next question that I want to explore in the breakout rooms is uh, what sort of evidence would support you in reflecting on blank topics? So whatever topic you're thinking about reflecting on, um, whether it's just general teaching or if it's some specific activity that you're not sure is landing properly. Um, and then how could you explore this through the lens of the student's eyes? Uh, I've, I've noticed already looking at the rubric and looking at different pieces of, of materials that we have that can support uh, reflection. Even if I'm just looking at uh, the rubric here, I could fill this rubric out from my perspective or from the student's perspective. Uh, and then I could also go deeper and do some journaling based on that as well. As a closing thought, I would really like to uh, go back to the cataphractus. Um, just imagine that circle, that, that lizard that is a circle and he's biting his tail, right? Or she or he is biting her, his or her tail. And, um, and what we want to do is remember that even if we feel like we're protecting ourselves and we feel like we should protect ourselves, which quite often as there's a lot of situations where you do need to do that, um, there's still a chance to be iterative and there's still a chance to be reflective. And uh, there's all these different ways that you can engage your students in that process and think of things through their eyes by asking them these types of questions um, and even engaging them in, in collaborative inquiry about your teaching uh, could be an opportunity for that. So this is something that uh, my colleagues are very knowledgeable about that and uh, more knowledgeable than I am about reflection. So I definitely encourage anyone who's looking to uh, develop a reflective practice to inquire for a consultation with uh, with some of us at CTL because it's such a powerful thing to do. Um, and it could just be effective. It could just be really focused on where you're at right now in your practice and uh, how do you get through the next week of teaching in the same way that you're teaching now. It doesn't have to be about changing things.